Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing USA forecast for today's second video. So as it's on a Wednesday, we're having a look at the weather for the United States and uh, North America. I shall get on with that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that the first video release day was our 7am upload. Uh, and we've got a 10 to 14 there for the uh, UK and for Northern Europe coming up for you later on this afternoon. Please like, share, subscribe on all the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We're going to bring you up to what's happening with this tremendous record-breaking heat wave in the northwestern part of America, southwestern Canada, um, in a moment. We're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic because there is interest uh, there. So that's where we're going to begin. Uh, right, so we've got two uh, disturbance areas from the National Hurricane Center here. We've got a yellow X and an orange X. So uh, the yellow X just there. I don't think you have to worry too much about that. It's disturbance two, uh, and it only has a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next two and five days. So I don't think you have to worry too much about that one. But the orange X does look rather more significant. There it is just there. That one is disturbance one. There's a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and a 70% chance in the next five days. At the moment, it's an area of uh, thunderstorms and showers, but uh, the system is expected to develop as it moves west, northwestwards uh, towards the uh, Windward Islands. So it's going to go in that kind of direction and develop over the coming days. If you have a look at the wind flow map from EarthNullSchool.net for the uh, Atlantic and Tropical Atlantic, we can zoom in and we can see actually the two disturbance areas uh, quite clearly. Uh, so that's the first disturbance area just there. And as I say, if that's quite a weak system, we don't have to worry too much about that. But the second disturbance area already looks a lot more significant. This one just here, you see there is already like a, a circulation developing with that. Uh, so it, it's already got characteristics of an area of low pressure. And, uh, and of course, this is how these systems begin. They begin their life as, um, as like just, just thunderstorms and showers, and then they will develop rotation and become an area of low pressure. And as the low pressure moves over the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic, uh, you know, picks up energy and, and develops from an area of low into like a storm and then potentially even into a hurricane and then you go up the uh, the strength of, of the hurricanes and whatnot so already that's got characteristics of a, of a, of a circulation of an area of low pressure it's got rotation beginning to uh, appear and uh, this is probably going to get stronger and power up as it moves over the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic in the coming few days. If we have a look at the uh, GFS forecast, uh, we can see, uh, you know, that already we've got the, the two disturbance areas there. So uh, this is uh, the one that, that's very weak. We don't have to worry too much about it. This is the developing area of low pressure that looks like it could develop into tropical storm in the coming uh, day or two. So over the next few days, the GFS does develop that further as it moves it over the uh, tropical Atlantic. So by, uh, by the weekend, uh, the area of low pressure is moving through uh, the Windward Islands and so on. Uh, and by this point, I think it probably is up to like tropical storm status. And then the system will move into the Caribbean, getting stronger. By this point, it may actually be a hurricane. Not sure. It could be a, like a weak hurricane or still a tropical storm moving through uh, the Caribbean uh, over the weekend. So, so a close eye will need to be kept on that, of course. Then it heads up towards Cuba and weakens as it gets over the, uh, you know, the Cuban landmass. It becomes weaker then through to the early part of next week and then begins to curve northwards and pushes into Florida getting a little bit stronger again as it moves over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico uh, by this time pushing up to uh, push up to Florida by the, by this time next week. So uh, Florida gets an impact from that system. And then the system moves up the east coast of America then uh, as we go into the second half next week, getting stronger as it does so, looking like quite an intense system by the time it gets towards the Carolinas, 
for example, at the end of next week. We're a very long way out now, of course, so <laughs> that is the caveat. We are a really, really long way out, but by this point, it looks like we've well, got a trouble on maybe a weak hurricane off the east coast of, uh, of America, giving an impact there, and then the system pushes out into the Atlantic, and that's that's the end of it then. Um, but yeah, you know, these are very, very early days for such significant uh, developments. That is the unusual thing about this. We're still, uh, still only into June a bit, the last day of June, and uh, it looks like we're going to get a tropical storm, possibly a hurricane, developing through the tropical Atlantic and pushing into the Caribbean and maybe eventually up to the United States uh, later on next week. So that's going to need to be kept a very close eye on in the coming few days, of course. Right, more about this heat wave then. Uh, so uh, I saw this tweet uh, earlier today from, uh, uh, I think that's Brian Brett Shing. Shin Shinda, I think that is. Brian Brett Shinda. Uh, climatology, at Climatologist49. I shall drop the link to uh, this person's uh, Twitter in the description. I just wanted to show you because it does show how extreme this heat wave has been in the west and the northwest of America. So this is, this is from yesterday. Uh, like, it's treated earlier on today, but, but the uh, temperature is raised yesterday. So uh, the tweet says, another all-time Canada record today. Lytham, British Columbia was 49.6 degrees, 121 Fahrenheit this afternoon yesterday. 29th of June. Uh, here's a map of stages of years in Canada have been uh, that have that, that have ever been as warm as Lytton was today. So there is Lytton just there, British Columbia, very very long way north into southwestern Canada, and you have to go right way down into like the desert areas of Nevada and uh, and California to find stations that have recorded temperatures uh, hotter than that, hotter than 49 uh, degrees. Basically, 49.6 is round up to 50 degrees, so hotter than 50 degrees, 121 Fahrenheit. Um, and and to, find, uh, to find places that, that record that kind of level of heat, you normally have to go down to like desert areas of California and, uh, and Nevada and so on. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, absolutely amazing. It's extraordinary how hot it has been in the uh, far northwest of America and into southwestern Canada. Records tumbling left, right and centre with this heat wave. Uh, very, very dangerous heat wave to this extreme level of heat. 121 Fahrenheit, just imagine that. So far north into uh, Canada. That is a very, very, very extreme level of heat, of course. Uh, for for that part of the world, so I hope everybody is uh, you know everybody is safe and and, uh, and managing to keep cool as best they can uh, because it must be a shock to have temperatures that hot so far north. Absolutely extraordinary developments. Things are beginning to cool down a little bit in the Pacific Northwest at the moment, although it's still it's still very hot and it's still going to stay hot, but just not quite as extreme. Uh, as it has been, I don't think. So we're looking at Seattle again today with the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. We looked at this last week, but of course we did, you know, we did forecast that there would be this extreme heat wave. But I think it's taking everybody by, by surprise exactly how hot it has got. Um, but it always looked likely that this would be a record-breaking heat wave for western, northwestern parts of America and southwestern Canada. And you see, at Seattle, it's still very hot, really. Red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average. Look how far above average we still are. We're still very close to 25 degrees at 858 HPA, albeit the upper air temperatures are lowering. But still, even so, even into, like, next week, pretty warm to hot conditions go on, just not as extremely hot as it has been. However, by the time we get through the second week of July, we could then be into something quite a lot cooler and back to our long-term 30-year average. So it's quite a bit of scattering within that, though. So some of the ensemble members are keeping the heat going or bringing it back into the second week of July. But I think generally, although it is a slow process, the general trend of a cool-down is there for the uh, for the um, uh, Pacific Northwest, you know, for, for the West Coast or Northwest Coast of America. Further inland, though, he's probably going to struggle to cool things down all that much over the next few days, uh, to be honest. Uh, Precipitation-wise, just very, very dry for Seattle over the 
coming days, of course. Temperature anomalies from the 30th of June to the 8th of July showed a northwest southeast split across America. So uh, northern and western states still coming out significantly hotter than average. Not quite as hot as it has been, perhaps, but still pretty hot across those northern northwest states. Conversely, though, these southern and eastern states are cooler. <coughs> excuse me, are cooler than average through there. And the precipitation anomaly from the 30th of June to the 8th of July, generally quite unsettled across many parts of the states, especially so it means more southern states, so like Texas, uh, for example, is coming out wetter than average through most of the state, which must be quite unusual uh, for, for Texas in the middle of summer to be coming out wetter than average. Many of these states do look quite, uh, many of these southern states, I should say, do look uh, quite wet. Further novel, though, it looks drier, uh, through the Midwest, for example, and still in this uh, far western, northwestern part of America, it does look rather dry up there. Up to Canada, the uh, temperature anomaly still looks hot, really, through most parts of Canada, especially the south and southwestern part uh, from the 30th of June to the 8th of July. Very, very hot, uh, uh, you know, with the temperature anomaly there. It's a little bit cooler over towards Newfoundland, um, but other than that, most parts of Canada looking hot in the uh, week ahead with above average temperatures and precipitation anomalies from the 30th of June to the 8th of July. Most areas drier than average, but there is a wettest wave through here probably being triggered by thunderstorms. Um, you know, generated by, by the heat and uh, and humidity and whatnot. Right, so this is how the GFS is currently set up for today across uh, North America. So you can see that obviously it's cooler in the northeast with this trough of low pressure. It's probably going to be bringing showers along as well as rain. It looks pretty warm in the south and southeast with this ridge here uh, over towards the southeastern side of America. But the real heat is in the west, and we see from the upper air temperatures that we still have this surge of heat all the way at the western side of America and into southwestern parts of Canada as well. So extreme heat does continue today, albeit towards the Pacific coast. It is beginning to turn a little bit fresh, a little bit of relief there coming in from the Pacific Ocean. Upper air temperatures further eastwards are very warm. I mean, it's a, con you know, it's a continental, uh, continental landmass in the middle of summer. So even like through the Midwest and into the East Coast, where, where we've established temperature anomalies are relatively low. But even so, it's still pretty warm for, for uh, you know, uh, this time of the year. Now, into the second half of the week, we're going to find this trough of low dropping into the northeast of part of America. That will bring further showers if not longer spells of rain, to the Midwest and to the East as well. Cooler temperatures through there. Further westwards, there the heat wave goes on, albeit reducing slightly. So uh, by the weekend, we see the hottest upper air temperatures beginning to recede back to where you'd expect them to be. Kind of like um, California, uh, uh, Arizona, uh, Nevada. All of those are the states where you expect it to be very hot with surface and upper air temperatures in July, we see it. And further northwards, but, but the upper air temperatures are lowering. Still very warm, I have to say. So we'll still be above average. We'll still be pretty hot from southwestern Canada and northwest America, but not as extreme as it has been over the past few days. There is a push of heat coming out of the west in towards parts of the Midwest, though, by the way, as we get through into uh, the weekend. So some of these Midwestern states will start to get hotter, I think, from, from this over the weekend. But at the same time, that will probably trigger uh, intense thunderstorms and downpours as, um, you know, pressure is going to be that much weaker through there. Into next week, uh, we look like that. So uh, there's the system moving into Florida, by the way, on Wednesday next week, that low pressure area just there. It looks relatively innocuous, but we do need to keep a, a, keep a, a, keep a watch on that. Um, further northwards, it's beginning to turn cooler and fresher in the far Pacific Northwestern coast of uh, America. So temperatures beginning to lower there. And into southwestern Canada, the cool down does continue. Don't have to go all that far in land, though, to find this very extreme heat uh, going on. So um, some of these uh, sort of Rocky Mountain states, for example, will, will keep some extreme levels of heat going, I think. But in the Pacific Northwest, it probably does start to cool down further through the middle part of next week. Uh, warming up across many central and eastern parts of America through the middle part of next week with those upper air temperatures. That's the end of next week. You see by then that uh, potential uh, tropical storm and or hurricane is off the eastern seaboard of, uh, of America. 
once again. So, uh, northern states, uh, again, do look that little bit cooler. Uh, Canada looks like it's generally turning more unsettled with this area of low pressure and becoming, uh, you know, widely cooler, I think, across many parts of Canada through... Um, through to the uh through to the last stages of next week and then on to day 10. Uh, this is sunny the 11th of july very significant uh storm in the atlantic off the uh off the east coast of america by that point that does look a bit like a hurricane i have to say though it's a long way north so it might be going uh sub tropical by then but that does look very significant otherwise it's generally been quite hard to cross many parts of America by this point, but Norman states will be uh, somewhat cooler, so that's how things look by Monday the 12th of July, generally quite hot, actually the eastern side of America has got hotter at this point, the uh, extreme heat in the western and southwest has faded out a little bit, but northwest looks rather, you know, rather more typical of what you'd expect, uh, and so things perhaps reverting to a more more uh, reasonable type setup, um, more average type setup by the middle of July. However, the heat then begins to reload as we come through uh, to the middle part of July in the west. So, so by the time it's the end of the GFS run, which is Friday the 16th of July, you can see this extreme heat is pushing back through the western side uh, of America and pushing back up to Canada again. But at the same time, it does look cooler over on the eastern, northeastern side of America through the Midwest too. So, so relief from the heat, I think, through next week, but it may be that by the middle of July, the heat is reloading again up this western side. That looks a little bit alarming, I have to say, for those in the west and in the northwest. The ECM looks like this, uh, the Euro, so all very much uh, the same with the upper air temperatures today. You see how extremely hot it is with those upper air temperatures right away from Mexico, going all the way up to uh, Canada as well. Very, very extremely hot upper air temperatures, dangerously hot, record-breaking hot upper and surface temperatures today. Into the second half of the week, we will start to see things beginning to cool down a little bit in some of these northwest states, although still very hot, really, through many of these uh, western states, I have to say. So, again, from California, over, over towards the Rocky Mountain states, generally uh, really hot still through there. The northeast, that's where it's a little bit cooler. Uh, and some of that heat is beginning to push through towards Midwest as well, uh, you can see. So, some, some of the heat will break through to the Midwest by the weekend, but will probably trigger heavy showers and thunderstorms. Into next week, the heat just begins to recede slightly down towards the southwest states, but even then, looking very warm to hot, really, up to Canada in the southwestern part of Canada anyway. Over towards the east side of Canada and northeastern America, not quite as hot through there. Uh, the, the extremity of the heat is definitely still in the west, but gradually beginning to recede away from the northwest a little bit, perhaps. That's day 10 with the Euro. The, the heat wave goes on, as you'd expect, through these southwestern states, and even up to the Canadian border, it still looks pretty hot. So I think out of the two miles, the, the ECM is probably the hotter of the two, but I think there will be a little bit of relief coming up over the weekend into next week in southwestern parts of America and uh, in northwest parts of America and southwest parts of Canada, by the way. Uh, finally, CFSV 2 sees a 500 millibar height spreading down to week periods. The first week period takes us from the 29th of June to 5th of July. The coming week, of course, has this ridge that's producing this tremendous heat, heat wave, heat spike, heat dome uh, in the uh, northwest America and southwestern parts of Canada. Low pressures underneath that, keeping some of those more east states a little bit cooler and more unsettled. Through to week 2, which is going to be the 6th, through to the 12th of July, the ridge begins to move over towards the uh, eastern and northeastern side of America. A trough of low pressure begins to dig in to the northwest that should start to bring some welcome relief to southwestern Canada and northwestern America. Week three is going to be the 13th to the 19th of July, just quite a big ridge then covering many parts of America. So, wide across states, all the thought by that point it's going to be pretty hot. And then, uh, week four, which is the 20th of July to 26th, uh, we've got a ridge off the uh, northwestern side of America, which probably sends a jet stream uh, for a little bit like that. So, that could be turning. Uh, rather cooler and more unsettled across many parts of states. Temperature anomalies uh, from the 5th through to the from 29th of June to 5th of July look really hot, of course, in the west, the northwest, and generally across these northern states and into far northeast as well. Otherwise, these central states and down towards the southern states actually look uh, rather cooler. Week 2 just goes generally hot across many parts of America with the 6th, 12th of uh, July. So, so the heat not as extreme in the west and the northwest, but at the same time, hotter temperatures are pushing 
uh, eastwards uh, across uh, many parts of central northern, I mean, western America, for example. And even some states are beginning to get hotter too. So, so the heat, you know, just kind of spreads out, I suppose, across the states there in week two. And as a result, the northwest uh, begins to cool down a little bit as the southwestern Canada. Uh, week three is the 13th to the 19th. The giant again is generally hot across many parts of America from uh, west to east. And then uh, week four is going to be the 20th, 26th of uh, July. So uh, this week looks hotter again in the west and the northwest and also the southwest of Canada once more, beginning to cool again uh, through the Midwest and over towards the eastern side. So later on in July, we might start to see a reload of this extreme heat pushing up the west coast. Uh, precipitation anomalies, uh, 29th of June to 5th July, week one, drier than average in these northern states, wetter than average, though, through many of the southern and southeastern states. Uh, week two is the 6th through to the 12th of July. Um, that looks wetter than average in the east and the southeast, drier than average in the north and the northeast. Week three is the 13th to the 19th of July, varying from state to state, drier than average in the northwest and in the northeast, a little bit wetter in between and in the southeast. And then uh, week four is the 20th of July to the 26th. And uh, just rather unsettled them through many parts of America. But of course, that is a really long way off. Right, so we've got two things that we have to really focus on in the next uh, few days. Of course, we've got the heat, the heat wave, heat dough in the northwest of America and southwest of Canada. That continues for the time being. I think it will ease a little bit over the weekend and into next week um, from those far northwestern uh, states and uh, and southwestern states of Canada. I think we will gradually see temperature uh, reducing, but it's going to be a bit of a slow process. But by this time next week, I imagine it'll be more comfortable uh, in that part of the world. Uh, but but then could be another push of very extreme heat later in July. One to watch. And then uh, the other story, of course, is what's going on with tropical Atlantic. We've got that disturbance area. It looks like it's going to develop into a tropical storm, possibly into a hurricane at some point over the weekend or into uh, next week. And that may well have impacts on Florida and also southeastern parts of America, just generally up that east coast through the course of uh, next week. So a lot going on, a lot to keep an eye on, and uh, we'll do it all over again next Wednesday, of course. So that's it for this week's USA forecast. We'll be back later on for 10 to 14 day for the UK and for Northern Europe as well. Uh, but for this week's USA forecast, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.